Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Las Vegas. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Going bell to bell with the best in professional wrestling news, entertainment, and lots of Sin City surprises from inside the squared circle. Now, let's get to all the exciting pro wrestling action and bring on the host. Here is Mark Hoke. Oh, yeah, I'm here. Boy, I sound great. Just warning everybody right now, the Mark Hoke Show is brought to you by our good friends at Vicks Dayquil. Yeah, baby. Let's do it. But... Hey, the show never stops. That's how it goes. So we are going to give you a good one today as we are going to be, well, hitting pretty hard on what happened yesterday at AEW All Out. And if you missed it or you haven't even caught any clips, you might be in for some surprises. But what a an insane night last night. And we're going to be breaking that down with Matt Black from WrestleZone just a second. We've also got D'Lo Brown coming on in the second hour. That's right. The WWE and TNA legend is going to be here. And we're looking forward to having him come on and uh, you know, talk about his career and promote what's going on at WrestleConnects here on Saturday here in Las Vegas. Saturday, September 14th, 10 to 5. It's going to be a great time. He's going to be there along with Greg the Hammer Valentine, Ted DiBiase, and so many others. So you definitely want to get ready to check this show out at the Tuscany Suites and Casino in Las Vegas on Saturday, September 14th. So brace yourselves. That's going to be a heck of a day and looking forward to seeing all of you down there. I should be fully recovered by then. And uh, just to save my voice a little bit, you know what, actually, let me... uh, Remove this show background too. There we go. This is going to be interesting, guys, because I have I caught a nasty bug. I'm not going to lie. I was down for a couple days. I'm still kind of here, but very happy to have you join us. And uh, let's get Matt Black in here right now. My hero. I love this guy to death. He is just a wrestling god. And there we go, Maddie. What's up? What's up, man? How you doing? <laughs> I'm hanging in there. The fever broke last night, so I'm getting there. Well, well, that's good. Yeah. So and progress, hi- one step at a time. Right. And uh, say hi to everybody in the chat box, hanging in there. Mark Cho, Gamer Bear, in the house. So welcome, guys. Thanks for being with us. We certainly do appreciate it. Well, Matt, this has been an interesting week, to say the least. We we had. Many felonies committed in the last four or five days <laughs> on AEW as, you know, I, well, we're going to get into WWE later. But, of course, Wednesday night, I'm going to say this. Burning down that house may have gotten Tony Khan a lot of money. And if you missed the promo, uh, Swerve Strickland bought his childhood home and Hangman Adam Page burned it down. Just went over to the place and torched it. Certainly caught everybody's attention, that's for sure, because they were a little bit behind on ticket sales and so on, and all of a sudden sold out for AEW All Out. And, uh, you know, that promo, uh, I I know it caught everybody's attention, Matt. Let me start there because I think that's where this road to this week, you know, really made the big push. What would you think? Of the close of Dynamite? Yeah. I I thought it was great. Um, Wednesday afternoon when that video came out online, I I just, I had a feeling, I'm like, oh man, hey man, it's going to burn this house down. And I didn't want to tweet it out. I didn't want to tweet it out publicly. So I I went to Mark Cho, who's who's in the chat, and I was just like, dude, I, I just have a feeling, hey man's going to destroy, uh, Swerve's childhood home tonight. And yeah, it it freaking happened. So <laughs> it's been uh that was a crazy way to end dynamite and it was a perfect way to allow them to change the steel cage match to a lights out match to let that close the show without taking away any importance from the from the AEW World Championship match. So everything was done perfectly as far as I'm concerned. 
yeah, it was it was a great finish to the show, and certainly, you know, I I'll, I'm going to be interested to see what the pay per view uh, numbers are going to be on that because I would imagine that house, whatever they if it was a set or however they did it, whatever they spent on that, it's going to be well worth every penny to say the least. But then we get into the card, and uh, you know the, the AEW All Out card. It was a great night overall. I thought it was a fantastic card the whole way through. Um, you know, terrific matches. I mean, Pack and Osprey just absolutely tore it down. Um, you feel that's that's going to be a match of the year contender right there? Uh, I I believe so. It was my it was my favorite match of the show. Uh, I thought Osprey and Pack was incredible, and there was a lot of great stuff on on all out last night, but that, that, that stole the show for me. And I, I would be very surprised if that's not still talked about as a match of the year candidate by the end of this year. And of course, uh, Osprey gets the win. So he will continue on and he's calling out ricochet and we're all looking forward to that. Um, MJF gets the win on Daniel Garcia. And apparently that was because Daniel hasn't signed his contract yet, but Garcia, but Garcia did. And, and I know you're shaking. I saw you're tweeting about it. Um, but Garcia did get his revenge in the end and, you know, took MJF out with a nice second. Well, well that revenge should have been the finish of the match. I, I, I'm sorry. I don't care if his contract's up in October or not. If you believe he's going to stay, show the man a little bit of goodwill and let him have the win. Because by not having the confidence to give him the win, to me, you're just allowing him to second guess if he should leave or not. If you, if you don't have the faith in him to give him that match on, on the pay-per-view when you believe that he's going to resign, then maybe maybe WWE should – maybe he should hear WWE out more before his deal's up in October. I, I think this was a big mistake from AEW. I, I think especially if MJF's going to be off for, for a while to go film a movie, there's there's no way that Garcia shouldn't have won that match clean last night. Yeah, I was a little surprised too. Uh, but you know, MGF gets the win. Like you said, he's uh, that that finish wrote, wrote him off, so he could actually go and uh, go film a movie. So he's going to be out of there for a little while too. But do you think Garcia stays? I mean, a lot of people are saying he's leaning that way. But it, well, you... I, as of yesterday, I thought he was staying, and now after that finish, I'm not 100 percent sure. I to me, the aftermath tells you that they believe he's staying. But if they if they if they're that confident that he's staying, then they should have just let him win the match. Like to me, it's it it shows a lack of trust in Garcia, as far as I'm concerned. If if you trusted him that he was staying, then you would have given him the win. To me, not allowing him to win that match and then doing the aftermath of the way they did makes me believe that they're not as confident as they want to portray to people that he's sticking around. Yeah, it's going to be that's just that's just my take. Yeah, that's going to be very interesting to see how that turns out. I mean, I would I would think that Daniel's going to stay. I mean, I he just doesn't seem like a a WWE kind of guy. I I could see him getting lost in the shuffle real quick over there, but I don't know. That's that's going to be his call. We'll see what WWE throws at him, but the funny thing about him is, you know, he doesn't have that wrestler's build. But when he gets in the ring, he's so good. He is just so good. You know, I mean, I know he, you know, he was doing the Red Death thing even a, a couple of years ago. He really impressed me. And I do think that, you know, he's he's got a good future. You know, could he could he bulk up a little bit? Yeah, that wouldn't hurt, you know, change the image a little bit. But otherwise, you know, he's he's very talented in the ring. I I I do what I could to keep him around for sure. Um, we had uh, the Young Bucks getting their win on the Blackpool Combat Club. We're going to talk about those bad boys in a little bit, at least half of them. But um, you know, the, the, but the you know, a good match. But where are the Bucks going to go, man? This is um, this doesn't seem you know as good as the tag team division was in AEW for a long time. It seems like it's just kind of shaky right now. You know, is anybody there really to challenge the Bucks at this point? Yeah, like Grizzly Young Veterans, I would say, is the is the play at the moment. But they need to beat FTR in Collision next week. Uh, if FTR beats them, then we're back to square one. Um, I still stand firm 
especially if this new media rights deal is done and Tony Khan's about to get a big influx of money. If Motor City Machine Guns have not signed pen to paper with WWE yet, Tony needs to back up the Brinks truck to their house and get them to his company as soon as humanly possible. Because I think if anyone could turn the tide on that tag division as a whole right now, it would be the Motor City Machine Guns. Yeah, they they could they need a, a new influx, and you know, I mean, the outrunners are getting popular, but that's not I, that's not going to be a long term answer for sure. Yeah, so it's they're a joke tag team, and they're they're funny, ha ha, but they're not they're not AEW World Tag Team Champion material. So you need you need teams that are going to compete for the title. Yeah, so we'll find out how that goes, but uh, looks like Matt and Nick Jackson are going to be sitting on top of the mountain for quite a while and we talk about the Osprey pack match I mean just wow I mean great effort by both guys and you know we got it, I, I don't think we need to be reminded about Will Osprey being one of the best in the world but everybody always seems to forget about pack you know he just slips under the the radar every once in a while and you know he doesn't get booked for a little bit or you know something happens and we get a match like this then and remember damn this dude's good you know, and and I wonder how far they're willing to take him, even after with what happened later on in the show. Of course. Oh, I, I think I think he's in line for a major push, and I think they've been wanting to do this with him for a while. It's Pac has been a, a series of an unfortunate events with AEW, because when COVID took place, he was kind of he was stuck overseas, so he lost a bunch of time there. And then he's had a couple injuries, which have set him back, you know, s- several months lost of his career with, with AEW due to injuries. I, I think if he, I think, I think if he's going to stay healthy now and all those issues are out of the way, I think he's in line for a major push with BCC going forward. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how that turns out, but a, a nice bolster for him that we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh and more of the violence last night. Chris Statlander and that, and Will Nightingale. Boy, they, you know, they had a tough match to follow, and they did it. They did it. They did it. They freaking did it, dude. I was I after after Pack and Osprey. I'm like, man, I feel really bad whoever for whoever, for whoever has to follow this match. And I saw it was Will on Chris. I'm like, oh no, this is so bad. And they crushed it. They understood the assignment. They knew what they needed to do. And they passed with flying colors. I don't think there's another match on that show last night that could have followed Osprey and Pack other than Willow Nightingale and Chris Statlander. Standing ovation to both of those ladies. That match was nuts. Yeah. In the best way possible. Yeah, Loved it. They did some pretty rough spots in there, too. I mean, it was a... It was a violent match. Boy, the, the split that, if, if you didn't see it, Chris Statlander did a split onto thumbtacks. A split. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and if you think that was that was the uh, hardest thing to watch last night, not even close. Well, it was at that point. At that point. It was at that oh, point. That, that turned out to be minor league as the evening went on for sure. Um, then we had that uh, Condell Championship match, and Okada holds on to the AEW Condell title, beating Mark Briscoe, Orange Cassidy, and uh, Takeshita. But I've, I've seen a lot of people, and I am agreeing with this. Let's just let Okada and Takeshita go at it. Just well, that, 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 let's to go. To me, that, they planted all those seeds last night. I believe that's the long-term plan. I don't believe it's the short-term plan. I believe we're going to see Okada and Takeshita in the finals of the Continental Classic at the end of the year, and I think Takeshita is going to beat him. Wow, there you go. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I think Takeshita is about to get a huge rub in AEW. They're going to, they're going to run off his momentum from the G1 Climax, the Continental Classics, kind of like a mini G1. So he's going to win his block. Okada's going to win his block. And Takeshita is going to beat him. Yeah, it, it's weird that. Takeshita, I think, has just been kind of in a, a strange place. I mean, with the Don Callis family. And, yeah, and, net- and honestly, anybody who gets locked in the Don Callis family is in a weird place. It, it doesn't <laughs> seem to really do anything for anybody who's involved in that faction. Yeah. So I, 
I will be curious to see what they do with Takeshi because I think he's someone that needs to be turned loose pretty quick. And agreed. Yep. And uh, just some comments. Let's see. I, from Gamer Bear saying, "I know I'd be weighing my options differently if I were Garcia after being shown so little trust." Wow. Um, Mark Joe saying, "Willow and Chris better than Mercedes and Sheeta." Probably would agree with that. And also got comments like, "Arrest everyone wrestling and all fellow all felony wrestling." There we go. Good job, guys. I love when, I love when everybody gets involved in that chat box, and you can too. Just hop on YouTube, Facebook, or X. And sign on in, and you can interact with the show. We would certainly appreciate that. And we'll make, we'll get into this uh, mercedes Monet match, and then I want to talk about the two big ones. But Mercedes and Sheeta, you know, pretty good match. But my question is, is Mercedes really doing what they thought she was going to do in AEW? Uh, you know, I, 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 would be... say she, I would say she is. I mean, be, beyond the Britt Baker match, which wasn't her fault, I think she's had a great run in AEW so far in terms of what she's done in the ring. I thought her and Sheeta was really great. Um, it's hard to compare it when you're putting up against everything else on that show. But, you know, in, in a vacuum, in a match uh, all by itself, I thought it was a great match. Uh, I think I think Sheeta and, and Money work well together, and I'm sure if they face each other again, it would be even better than the last time. You know, it, it just it takes, you know, familiarity. And that that was very blatant in the in the all in match with Baker. Like they had no chemistry at all, mm. and it, it felt like Mercedes was just trying to carry Brett to the best match possible, and it just it wasn't working. Like to me, that to me, all in wasn't on Mercedes. It was it was pretty much on Brett. But you know what can you do? I I, I was one of the people who thought that match was going to be great, and I. They made me eat my words a little bit on that one. So what can you do? Yeah. Well, we've got two more matches we're going to talk about all in when we come back with Matt Black from WrestleZone. But first, got to mention, you know, you had a chance. You could have made some money on a few of those matches last night by going to betonline.ag. And if you just go to the markoakshow.com website right now and click on the sponsor banners, you can get a 50% sign-up bonus up to $1,000. So if you put in 1000 bucks. You get five hundred free dollars, Matt. I'm giving them five hundred bucks. What can I do? Ain't nothing, ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, so, and of course you can bet on all sports and even entertainment and politics on this site too. Cricket, volleyball—it's crazy. So head on over there to go to markhokeshow dot com and click on one of our banners for uh, betonline.ag. That's how I get credit for it, so that would be helpful for me. And uh, you know, have some fun on betonline.ag. We'd certainly appreciate it. All right, we're going to take the first break. I'm going to get a drink and, you know, try and keep my throat rolling. And we'll be back more Matt Black as we talk about the two big ones at AEW All Out last night. Betrayals and, well, a lot of pain. Lots and lots of pain. So stick around, everybody. We'll be right back. Looking for high-quality custom screen printing in Las Vegas? Look no further than Off-Grid Creations. Need a few custom t-shirts for a local event, band merchandise, or family reunion? We've got you covered. Large order of uniforms for your staff, sports team, or club? We can handle that, too. Our experienced team will work closely with you throughout the entire process from design consultation to final product. Call us at 661-300-1115. That's 661-300-1115. Or visit our website at off-gridcreations.com. Get a free consultation today 1015 FM K Don This is the Mark Hoke show The Mark Hoke show Here again your host Mark Hoke All right let's get back to it Enough of me being a whiner Yep I am fighting off a cold but I'm hanging in there because I love pro wrestling I love doing the show very happy to be with you here on KDOM, 101.5 FM, the talk of Las Vegas, the Odyssey app, and streaming worldwide. That's right, on YouTube, X, and Facebook. So you can join us there. Just look up the Mark Hoke Show. That's all you got to do. And I have one of my dearest friends in pro wrestling, Matt Black, is in the house from WrestleZone. He is just a king of pro wrestling, and we always enjoy having him on the show. So, Matt, we were breaking down all in. 
are all out. And when uh, we get to the next to last match, it's the Brian Danielson versus the scapegoat Jack Perry, who had a really cool open, by the way, going into that match. Brian gets the win, and then we see it. The John Moxley comes out with Claudio, and uh, Pac comes out, and Yuta's out there. And all of a sudden, Claudio throws the forearm on Brian. Pac is holding back Yuta. And then one of the more interesting spots I think I've seen in pro wrestling in a while, Moxley takes a giant plastic bag and suffocates Daniel Bryan. Your thoughts on this? Because I think at first it was, wow, the BCC turned on on Daniel or Brian Danson, okay. But was the plastic bag too much? I mean, I think I think it's first important to point out that they saved Danielson from the Christian Cage cash in before this turn even happened. So they set everybody up for a gigantic swerve there. Yeah. And I was I was shocked to see Claudio turn. But if you go back in the last several months, there there have been hints of dissension between Claudio and Danielson. So I think they're going to go back and tell that story and they're going to play the clips in like a video package or something on Dynamite. And the Claudio turn is going to end up making a lot more sense to people who weren't paying attention to the clues. Um, I saw the Moxley thing coming. I did not see the plastic bag thing coming. And to be quite frank, I didn't like the plastic bag thing. And I don't think – I. this is just my opinion. You can think whatever you want, but I don't I don't think things like plastic bags, suffocation has a place in any era of professional wrestling. And I know it's been done before, you know, Terry Funk and Flair and stuff like that in the past. Didn't like it then, don't like it now. And it's a lot more realistic now than it was then. It was a lot more cartoony when they did it. Um, just not, I'm just, I'm not a fan of that stuff, but that's, that's just me. I know everybody feels, has a different opinion on it, but that's, that's just my two cents. Yeah. And, uh, so that wrapped up a big heel turn. So that may, that may ruin my Nigel McGinnis, Brian Danielson match at world's end, because I have a feeling this is going to take precedence. Then we get to the main event and hangman Adam page and swerve Strickland and, of course, this was a steel cage, lights out match, and a year in the build to this one with just some absolutely brutal, and I, and I will say dangerous spots in this match. They were throwing each other off a cinder block, which was not a gimmick block. That was a legit cinder block. Um, just crazy things they did the whole match, and the match wraps up with one that, I, I was what been looking on social media the last uh, time, 12 hours or so I've been conscious, with uh, Hangman Adam Page sticking a needle into the mouth of Swerve Strickland and you know pushing it into his cheek and then doing an unexposed chair shot. Now, admittedly, they, I'm sure they shaved the chair down and rigged it a little bit, but... Once again, a very, very violent and uh, you know, brutal uh, ending to this thing. And just some spots in there that I think made a lot of people uncomfortable. And the wrestling community was reacting to it. Some were cool with it. Some not so much. I saw people like Ricky Morton uh, was on, on X saying, you know, no more, no more headshots. No more chair headshots. Um, you know. So I'm curious, Matt, what are your thoughts about this? Because I, I mean, let, we'll talk about the match first, and then we'll kind of take it to a general concept. What do you think about how this match went and finished? Uh, I loved the match. I uh, didn't care for the syringe. I uh, did not like that. I don't like needles to begin with. So <laughs> to see one used, seeing, seeing someone getting jabbed in the mouth, didn't like that. The steel chair thing, AEW has, I don't know how, um, but AEW's figured out a way to gimmick their steel chairs. They know what they're doing. Like, these steel chair shot, the, like, the steel chair shot to the head 
that you saw was no different than someone taking a, taking a trash can to the head right now. They, they've, they've figured out how to do it. They've, there's a, there's a magic to it. You know, you don't reveal the industry secrets and such like that, but they're not going to do like a legitimate unprotected chair shot from like back in the attitude era. That's not what this is. These chairs are gimmicked and they, and they're designed to safely be used with, with a headshot. Like just like, a, just like when people get uh, smacked over there with the, with the garbage cans, it's the exact same thing. Um, I had no issue with, I had no issue with the trash can. I did not, I did not like the syringe. I did not think that was necessary. Um, but I, I thought the match ruled. I, I, they needed to up the ante following their Texas death match. They needed to somehow top that. And it was going to be difficult to top that if they didn't go out and do some of the things that they did last night. And I, I think they did top it. You know, I, I thought, I thought the match was freaking awesome. So yeah, I, I, I loved it. You know, like, like I said, minor, I had minor gripes to the show last night. The, the, the opening contact, the way I'm Jeff Garcia finished the, the syringe and the plastic bag. But other than that, I thought AEW delivered a monster pay-per-view last night with all out. I thought it was a great show. Yeah. And it was, and the, and the matches, the match itself with hangman and swerve, you know, it was a really good match, but I, I think there's a, a bigger overall question that, needs to be asked and it is with with AEW struggling a little bit in the attendance area and if you're bringing if you want to bring families in man this stuff's not family friendly and you know I mean I know as a father if I'd have been sitting my daughter's 15 now but if I'd have been sitting there with her when she was nine or ten and seeing you know, somebody gets suffocated with a plastic bag or somebody getting a syringe shoved in their mouth, um, you know, and some of those other, you know, some of the other spots. Man, I'd be thinking twice about letting my daughter see that or, you know, taking her to a event. I, I really would. I would have to consider this more of an adult thing for me. And I, I just wonder if AEW to a point is hurting themselves because they keep seeming, you know, they keep, like you said, they had to up the ante from the last death match. Well, you know, now, now what do you do? What is the next big feud do? To, well, I, to I don't, th- I don't, I don't think we're going to see another sort of an man match anytime soon. So they're not going to have to worry about that. I think, I think their rivalry for the time being ended last night at all out. But what about the next feud though? I'm saying, let's say you get, you know, we well, get the a, next feud doesn't matter if you reset it with two different guys, then you're not, you're not up in the ante from each other. I'm speaking of up in the ante in the Hangman and Swerve feud itself. Mm-hmm. They needed to go beyond what they did in the Texas Death Match to make the Steel Cage Match feel more impactful. If you're doing a brand new feud, you don't need the up the ante of what two other guys did. I, I don't, I don't think that's a fair comparison. Okay, that's fair enough. I mean, I, I'm just looking at. You know, when you people are going to start to expect this, these things happening more and more. And a lot of times when you, you know, when you get into an entertainment situation like that, like, well, what's well, what's your next big trick? You know, and and I and I get and I do get a little nervous about, you know, where where do you go from here? You know, where do you go from? OK, you know, I, I just suffocate one of my best friends with a plastic bag. Well, you know, OK, well, what's next? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a, it's a tricky. I, I, I'm not saying it's bad, but I'm saying that I think people, I think they've got to think about that a little bit more because if they, if you want to bring more people in, you know, part of the way to do it is to have parents bring their kids. And uh, you know, I, you know I what I'm saying. I personally think I personally think AEW is very comfortable with the being the alternative to the family friendly product that is the WWE. I think they were designed when they were created to be an alternative, and I think they will continue to figure out ways to be the alternative to WWE. And if that is some forms of violence that you're not going to see on the other product, and you're going to be the more adult-oriented wrestling product, then that's what they're going to go for. Because at the end of the day, once this media rights deal gets announced, and 
AEW becomes, you know, the second most profitable wrestling company in the last 50 plus years, they're not going to be more too worried about, you know, things like selling out venues and, and stuff like that. They're going to be, they're going to be fine. And I, I think, you know, if you build it, they will come and there's an audience for what they're doing. And as long as they're consistent with their product and they continue to put on a quality product week in, week out, they will continue to build their audience that way. Consistency is key. And that's the problem with all pro wrestling companies because they go through hot and cold periods. AEW needs AEW is hot right now and AEW needs to remain hot. They can't they can't afford to cool themselves off um going in through the rest of this year. No, that is very true. And you know, they they certainly caught everybody's attention and now it's gonna be fun to see what they do with it. You now our and we have Jesse Hyde in the chat box saying BCC announcing Shane O'Mac as their new leader. Is that where this is going? Do you, do you no. think Shane's involved in this? I don't. I don't. Not even a little bit. Um, that was a really weird fan theory that came out when Mox said, this is not your company anymore. But I believe he was talking to Brian Danielson. I think Mox is angry that Danielson holds a championship for a company he's not under contract with. Uh, I, I think Mox takes that personally. I think Mox bleeds AEW, and I think he feels that Danielson already has one foot out the door. He's not under contract. He's holding the company's world title, and Mox has a problem with that. And I think that's where all this is stemming from. I, I think Mox wants to talk to Darby Allen because I think Mox wants Darby's title shot that Darby currently has against Danielson at uh, – at a grand slam later this month. Right. I, I think that's what this is. I think that's what this is all leading to. So it's, it's going to be very interesting to see how things play out on dynamite. But the thing is, everybody's talking and I, I think they're going to, I think they're going to have a lot of eyeballs on uh, TBS this Wednesday night for the show. I have a feeling they're going <laughs> to, they definitely will be. I mean, this was a, a, whether you were comfortable with everything or not that happened, on the card, you got to wonder what's next. And in and a lot need, of places. And you, to, and you need to keep in mind, a lot of this hardcore stuff, they don't do a lot of that on TNT and TBS. This is more reserved for, you know, behind the paywall pay-per-view type thing. So if, if you're worried about the family-friendly thing, I still think you could take a family to Dynamite or Collision or whatever but when we're going pay-per-views, probably you don't want to take your kids to a paper at AEW pay-per-view based on take a look at the card before you buy a ticket because there might be a match on there you might not want your kids to see. Yeah, I mean, but you're not you, typically you don't you're not seeing that stuff on TNT and TBS as much as as much as some people might prefer them to be doing that. Yeah, I mean, I was at Double or Nothing, and you know, I had a a friend of mine for that works here at the station who had her her uh, son with her with them and uh you know and they were like oh man this is too much and that was double or nothing when they had the uh anarchy in the arena match um you know the edge steel cage match you know and it was a lot i mean you know these are this you know i just wonder if this is something they're going to have to watch out for because you think about it you know i think uh somebody in the chat box uh had made a funny com uh, comment about the f being a felony group here but the you know, we've seen Jack Perry get lit on fire, and then that match, Darby Allen got hung upside down and double super kick with thumbtacks and all that. And now you add this in, and man, it's a lot. It is a lot. So I don't know. Yeah, we're just, Mark just saying, you're just seeing arson on TBS. That's good. There you go. Yeah, just the, the minor crimes. Property crimes are okay. I, I mean, Randy Orton set Bray Wyatt's house on fire. It's not like WWE, the PG product, hasn't done this before. Yeah. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. So, well, we'll see how it turns out for AEW, but Wednesday's Dynamite should be a lot of fun. So we're going to get ready for that. All right, we're going to take another break. And when we come back, something a little more tame on WWE took place. We got some comparisons to the uh, the arsonage, not favorably, but uh, all sorts of fun stuff there. Plus, wow, four second loss for a repackage that wasn't good. Stick around, everybody. We'll be right back. Matt Black from WrestleZone with me on the Mark Hoke Show. Stick around for more. One hundred one five FM K Don. 
You're listening to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Vegas, The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Now, here again is Mark Hoke. All right, let's keep this rolling. More of the Mark Hoke Show here on KDON, best in pro wrestling news and entertainment. I've got Matt Black with me. And don't forget, next hour, D'Lo Brown is going to be joining us on the show. Can't wait to talk to him. As, of course, he'll be at WrestleConnects here on Saturday at the Tuscany Suites and Casino in Las Vegas, 10 to 5. Get your tickets now, Saturday, September 14th. Should be an awesome time. Ted DiBiase, Greg the Hammer Valentine, Maria Canellis, so many others are going to be at that show. And we're looking forward to talking to D'Lo a little bit. I'm curious to see he'll have some thoughts on everything that happened. So should be a fun interview with D'Lo Brown coming up in hour number two. All right, Matt, let's shift it over to WWE a little bit. The bracelet's dead. Thank God. Yay! Thank God. Ah, oh, they finally destroyed the bracelet. Drew ripped it apart, and I think our I think a little bit of uh, joy was interjected into our souls after it, it happened. Yeah. <laughs> but but we're gonna get one more match. I and honestly, you know, I was a little surprised. I guess I wasn't because I knew it was coming, but to a point, you know, CM Punk pretty much took care of Drew McIntyre in that strap match. And Drew comes back out and isn't going to let it go, and we're probably going to get a Hell in a Cell match of bad blood. But, you know, are you, are you happy that that, I mean, obviously you're happy about the bracelet being done, but did, did we need a third match in this one? Yes, we absolutely needed Hell in a Cell. You can't, you can't let them go one each and not have the rubber match. Go Hell in a Cell. The, as far as I'm aware, the plan is for Punk and Gunther at Survivor Series. So clearly Punk's going to win. Um, and I'm just looking forward to seeing Gunther chop the ever-living heck out of CM Punk at Survivor Series. Is is Punk the next world champion? I mean, no. I, Gunther's beating him. I, I don't foresee I don't see for I don't foresee Gunther dropping that title anytime soon. Yeah, I like don't we either. might we might be looking at John Cena and Gunther at WrestleMania. It it is starting to look more and more like it. Which, yeah, which would be which would be interesting. Uh, I I think the fans would go crazy. I mean, but I don't know. I I would I would have loved to have more seen Gunther Punk at uh, at WrestleMania than Cena. But you know, it's Cena's retirement tour. Uh, and... for, they they want to do Rollins and and Punk oh. and Mania. Yeah. They, they they wanted to do it this year, and injuries and things prevented it. They they want to go back to that for WrestleMania. So as far as for as far as they're concerned, the plan right now is for Punk and Rollins at, at Mania. Yeah, boy, this is shaping up to be a pretty interesting WrestleMania already. When no matches announced, obviously, but we're looking at, you know, we could be looking at Punk Rollins, Gunther and Gunther and Cena, Orton and Rhodes, and then and Rock, Rock and Roman. Boy, I'll tell you and, what, and you still can't roll out Rock and Cody because that's what Rock wants to do. So and a lot of people, there's a lot of pushback to do Rocket Roman instead. Like the, the like the long term plan is to do Rocket Roman at 42, and to do Rock and Cody at 41. But I I don't know if people are going to be that patient to wait that long. So it, it's it's going to be very interesting to see what they do with with Rock at at Mania. So we'll see. Yeah, we will. And how all this ties together with the bloodline. Of course, Jacob Faltu was challenged by Cody and Solo held him back. So it's going to be Cody and Solo on the first SmackDown. And by the way, don't forget, everybody, SmackDown is moving over to USA Network this week. So, you know, make sure you change your DVRs and everything else. And don't be surprised when you turn on Fox and it's not there. So, Probably you... It's the high school or college football game instead. Right. Do you, do you think this is a good move for them going back to USA with SmackDown? No, they didn't have a choice. Like Fox, Fox wasn't bringing them back. Um, Fox has gone on record as the, the the ad revenue that they were getting was not making up for the the viewership and demo that they were pulling in. So they were not willing to pay them more money. And I believe Fox believes that they overpaid in the first place. 
So th- there was nowhere to go for, for SmackDown other than back to USA. They yeah. had to. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see the ratings numbers uh, when... Oh, they'll go down. Yeah. I mean, when, you, when you're on network television, you're always going to have a higher number than you're going to have on cable. So the numbers will go down, but I don't think it'll be that bad. I think it'll be comparable to comparable to what Raw does, you know, every week, you know, somewhere between 1.5 and 1.7 million, I, I would say is is a, is a favorable number to guess ahead of time. I'm guessing they'll be somewhere around that range. Yeah, so we'll see how that turns out for WWE as they head take SmackDown to USA this week. Giovanni Vinci, and this one just caught me off guard, repackaged the guy. You know, he's going to be this superstar, and he gets a four-second roll-up with Apollo Crews. And there are apparently a lot of people in WWE that weren't happy about this. And, man, I saw you shaking your head. You're stunned by this, too. I was shocked when I saw it. How are we supposed to take people with video packages seriously now if this is how they're going to utilize them? To, to me, when you were growing up, if, if, if a wrestler is being introduced weekly through video packages, that allowed you to understand that when they finally showed up and they got in the ring that they were going to be perceived as a big deal. And you did weeks of video packages with this guy to try to rebuild him in the form of what he was down in NXT before the Imperium stuff. And he lost in four seconds to Apollo Crews. And look, 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 don't get me wrong. I love Apollo Crews, but that man loses to everybody. Um, so why is he beating somebody you're trying to rebuild in four seconds? I, I don't get it, man. I really don't. And if you weren't, if you didn't really want to use them, then don't repackage them and just let his deal run out or send him down to NXT and let him do something down there. Like none of this made any sense to me whatsoever. Yeah. This reminded me a lot of the carrying cross situation when Jeff Hardy beat him in two minutes. You know, it, it it just, it, it is. Yeah, but it, that one was even worse because Kerry Cross was the NXT champion at the time. Yeah. That man was holding the championship belt of your third brand. And you just had him lose like that. Personally, I thought it was hilarious because I was not a big NXT Cross um, fan at that point. And I thought it was funny, but it, it. There's no argument that it was detrimental to Cross's WWE career at that point. And even being released and coming back, it still doesn't feel like he's recovered um, from some of that early stuff he was doing on Raw when he was uh, being brought over from NXT. It, it's just nobody takes nobody takes him seriously. He, he's not taken. He's not viewed as a legitimate threat in WWE like he was everywhere else that he was. Yeah, and it's a real shame because uh, Kevin's a terrific, terrific wrestler. And, you know, he and Scarlett are just such an t- incredible team together. And, you know, I I still haven't forgotten when he came out with Roman Reigns with the, with the hourglass and tipped it over. And I'm thinking, wow, he is getting a monster push. And where it's ended up is pretty sad. And, you know, Giovanni Vinci is going to be a victim of this. I'm, we'll see if they... I'd imagine they have a plan, but boy, that's not, that's just not the way to do it. Just not the way to do it. So what are you going to do? Uh, real quick, uh, Joe Testor, what'd you think? I, I thought for his first on the job, I thought he did a really good job. And to me, I feel like he's only going to get better from here. He's a, he's a longtime fan. Um, I thought he got more comfortable as the show went on. And I think one, I think a year from now, I think he's going to be doing great work in the broadcast booth for WWE. It just stuff like that takes time to adapt. And I, I thought for his first night, I thought he did. I thought he did a really good job. No, no doubt, Matt. Where can everybody find you, buddy? Um, you can follow me on the Twitter machine at RAWF Showtime, and I'm at WrestleZone almost every day, writing up the latest news, rumors, and interviews, and what have you so check me out all right matt thank you for joining me here and keeping me alive and afloat for my uh (laughs) you're welcome i hope you feel better Uh, i'm getting there buddy all right so there you go hour number one of the mark oak show is complete we will be hearing from d lo brown in hour number two so stick around everybody we've got a whole lot more on the mark oak show we'll be right back
Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show, like us on Facebook at The Mark Hoke Show, and visit MarkHokeShow.com to keep up with everything happening with the show. And remember to check out all of our archive shows on YouTube at The Mark Hoke Show and download our podcasts at MarkHokeShow.Podbean.com and all your favorite podcast outlets. So join The Mark Hoke Show family today, and thanks for listening.